flash floods have hit parts of Saudi Arabia as heavy rainfall has been recorded across the kingdom since last week. Flash floods have hit parts of Saudi Arabia as heavy rainfall has been recorded across the kingdom since last week. Saudi Arabia is known for its hostile climate, with little rainfall and mostly desert and arid lands. However, a shocking phenomenon is currently happening in the desert land. Surprisingly, the desert is rapidly turning into fertile farmlands, and this is a shocking phenomenon even to scientists. But what is happening in the desert? Keep watching this video to find out. The country of Saudi Arabia can be seen on this map. Saudi Arabia has a land size of 2.14 million square kilometers, which is nearly the same as Western Europe, making it the 14th largest nation in the world. Before we go into details of the causes of the increasingly miraculous farmlands in Saudi Arabia, it might do some good to know how dry this country initially was. We had long known Saudi Arabia to be associated with scorching heat, dryness and deserts. This was right, in fact, Saudi Arabia is the home of the world's largest desert, Rub al Jali, with an expanse of 6,500,000 square kilometers. This, in fact, was the size of a whole country. Saudi Arabia does not even have a single permanent river. If you think you've heard it all, relax, because we're just getting started. We said earlier that Saudi Arabia is one country with very little rainfall. Now let's be specific. Historically, the country has never seen an annual rainfall of more than 150 millimeters. This needs to be a better ratio. Because of this, a large part of Saudi Arabia has been majorly dry, leaving just a small part of the southwest region for planting. Even up until the late 1960s, the country was recorded to still have as low as 400 square kilometers of fertile land, which is 0.5% of the entire country. At this point, you may wonder how the citizens had survived in terms of agricultural products. Well, the answer is plausible. Before the country started experiencing a breakthrough in the increase of farmlands, the citizens survived mainly by planting small fields with local crops. In contrast, all other necessary food items that could not be planted were imported. At the time, narrow strips of coastal lines were the only planting area and only a few crops like dates and vegetables were grown. With a country that big, this limitation was no good news. Let's now explore the remarkable oil dam, a key component in Saudi Arabia's startling expanding farmlands. Even though the nation lacked water, it needed more. In actuality, Saudi Arabia is the nation with the greatest oil reserve in the world. Well, it's true what they say. God endows everyone with something unique. When a significant volume of crude oil was found in a dam oil field somewhere in March 1934, this was proven to be true for Saudi Arabia. The depth of the dam, which was 1,440 meters, was extremely deep. As a result, the nation quickly rose to own nearly 17% of the world's proven petroleum reserves. There were thought to be about 75 million barrels of oil in this reserve. The Saudi Arabian government decided it could do more with the wealth of its oil resources, and so the miracle of quickly expanding farmland started. In the present, Saudi Arabia can be considered one of the seven modern wonders of the world. This is due to the fact that an area that used to be a hub for food imports is now a hub for the export of goods including wheat, dates, dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, birds, fruits, vegetables, and even flowers. But how did a nation that was almost entirely made up of desert go from importing food to exporting food? What actions are the Saudis taking that we are unaware of? Although it would seem that way, there is no magic at all behind the Saudi Arabian desert's quick transformation into productive farming. While some of the causes of this astonishing event were due to pure luck, a greater portion were the product of purposeful planning and acts made by the Saudi Arabian government. But precisely what did they do? Hold on while I walk you through the tactical procedures and fortunate events that transformed a desert into productive land. They began by making significant technical investments. This is because in order to offer everything necessary to convert desert terrain into productive farming, technological equipment was required. As a result, Saudi Arabia's agricultural sector has been revolutionized thanks to significant investments in initiatives that support cutting-edge agricultural technologies and rural infrastructure. Although Saudi Arabia is a nation that has benefited greatly from oil, the government didn't just sit back and do nothing. Instead, they used the nation's resources to create favorable conditions for the populace. 
the government had put a lot of effort into setting up facilities for making dairy, meats, and poultry meals early on in their investment endeavor. By 1985, the country had reached a point of self-sufficiency with regards to goods like milk, eggs, and meat. They not only achieved self-sufficiency, but also significantly increased agricultural exports. Additionally, a huge amount of milk was produced during this time, with each cow producing about 1,800 gallons annually. Fish farms were expanding as well. These farms were started in both on-land and offshore sites. The construction of these fish farms resulted in the production of seafood and the country benefited greatly from the production of shrimp. Saudi Arabia consequently grew to be a significant exporter of shrimp to nations like Japan and the USA. The black tiger shrimp breed seals had the best results. Furthermore, thanks to the government's efforts, Saudi Arabia quickly transitioned from importing wheat to exporting it. Building wheat silos in 1978 allowed for a quick transition to wheat sufficiency in 1984. Currently, major grain producing areas such as Pak Hill and Kazim produce roughly 3.6 tons of wheat per acre. Other cereals like millet and barley were also produced. After a while, grain production grew to such an enormous scale that it had to be restricted in order to preserve water supplies. The production of basic agricultural products like fruits and vegetables increased as farming and transportation techniques improved. As a result, food, including tomatoes, watermelon, grapes, citrus fruits, onions, squash and grapes gained widespread renown in the region and played a significant export role. Again, for the Saudi population, the growth in farming operations translated into a greater choice of regional foods. Dates were a part of these dishes. This led to the production of various varieties of dates, totaling roughly 500,000 tons annually. To combat poverty and food shortages around the world, several factories in the nation soon got involved in the manufacturing of thousands of tons of dates. The country's participation in international aid increased to the point where it was second largest. The country grew so involved in international charity that it surpassed other countries as the second largest donor of food aid to the UN. Being in Saudi Arabia right now ought to be a nice feeling. Another factor that contributed to the country's agricultural situation quickly improving was the government's desire to assist regional farmers. They accomplished this in part by offering farmers interest-free loans and technical assistance services. Again, the farmers had access to cheap fuel, electricity and water, as well as duty-free entry of farm equipment and supplies. The government was also astute and kind enough to give investors enticing perks. Therefore, for a period of up to 10 years, foreign venture partners were free from paying taxes. In order to provide additional incentives, the investment laws that were established in April 2000 went further. Without the work of the nation's Ministry of Agriculture, which implemented beneficial policies to assist local farmers, none of this would have been possible. The Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank, Saab, has also been giving out interest-free loans and subsidies to help farmers get the best possible yields. Organizations for grain silos and flour mills were also founded in 1972, and they were in charge of purchasing and storing wheat, erecting flour mills, and creating animal feed. Modernized roadways were built to link agricultural areas with import markets. Additionally, the government sponsored capital-intensive programs that benefited farmers with high capital requirements, assisting in economic diversification. The government additionally funded research initiatives targeted at developing fresh food crops, raising crop yields, and discovering novel approaches to making crops pest-resistant. In agricultural research sites located within several colleges across the nation, local farmers and scientists also worked together. All hands were literally on deck. Since water was a necessary component of agriculture, Saudi Arabia's ability to succeed in agriculture depended on luck and ingenuity. Here is how the water problem was resolved. Aquifers were used first. Surprisingly, Saudi Arabia is not as dry as first thought. In the most promising urban and agricultural areas, deep tube wells were dug. This was a historic water source on which Saudi Arabia now completely depended. In their quest for lush land, Saudi Arabians today rely heavily on the aquifers as one of their main water sources. Once more, the nation was able to make the most of the seawater at their disposal. As a result of the government's wealth in coastal areas that extend from the Persian Gulf to the Red Sea, desalinization activities were quickly undertaken. As a result, seawater was quickly transformed into drinkable water that could be used in homes and businesses. 
As a result, more than 27 desalinization plants were run by the Saline Water Conversion Corporation, SWCC, which generated more than 3 million cubic meters of drinkable water per day. The nation finally advanced to what is now known as electric power recycled water to address the water problem. Reusing the water used for home purposes was part of this process. For this reason, significant metropolitan industrial hubs such as the capital city and others established water recycling factories to aid in the recycling of water. These days, recycled water is primarily used to irrigate agricultural fields. All of these processes helped agriculture and quickly made water available on the land. This video has come to a close. We appreciate your interest. Now you know why Saudi Arabia's deserts are turning into verdant fields. What did you think of this video? Please let us know in the comments area below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thanks for watching.